The scripture reading for this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. A rather unusual uh, scripture lesson for Christmas Sunday, a uh, Christmas Day rather service. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, and how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down on the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man? who fell into the hands of the robbers, the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. In a moment's time, we will be uh, witnessing the message for this morning, the Christmas musical entitled Legacy of Love. Now, a few days ago, uh, we did have the uh, first presentation on a Saturday evening and some of you are coming for the second time. Notwithstanding this, I'd just like to mention a little bit about this story. Josiah is the choir director of the Hallelujah Kids Choir. Recently, his sister had died. All the children in the kids' choir loved Josiah very much. Especially there were six children belonging to this choir and they happened to go online and found out that there was a competition organized entitled Leaving a Mark or Doing a Good Deed and the people who enrolled for this competition, uh, if they won, they would receive a prize. Now, the first prize was an iPad. How many of you do not know what an iPad is? Put up your hands. I think everybody, maybe one or two, uh, you may not know what an iPad is. Now, at that time, Josiah comes in and uh, in front of the six children, uh, discovers that his own iPad uh, has stopped functioning and so the children's minds click and when Josiah leaves the scene they decide that they want to win the first prize and get the iPad and present it to their choir director they were motivated by love for Josiah and so they entered into the competition. Now, part of the acting reveals that there were four projects that they did. 
And my wife made sure this morning to ask me to emphasize the four things that they did. Firstly, they were asked to clean the multi-purpose hall. Those are church members, you know, the multi-purpose hall is next door. Secondly, they were asked to organize some toys and clothes to give to the uh, poor children uh, or children that may not be so fortunate uh, who are part of the migrant people living here in Klang under MMK Ministries. Thirdly, they were asked to bake or make brownies so that they could sell these brownies and uh, get some money. And fourthly, they were sent to Dataran Seni. Now those of you who may not be familiar, Dataran Seni is uh, just across the bridge, the other side of the bridge, uh, next to Shaw Centre Point. And once a year, the combined churches in Klang will have their Christmas celebration in Dataran Seni. So they did all these good works to leave a legacy of love and then it was the outcome of the competition. And what happened was that, I cannot say, my wife says I cannot say, okay? So I hope you have a little grasp of the story. Without much ado, I... Yes, one more announcement, okay? And uh, on Saturday, uh, we wanted to, but we were restrained from doing it. Please, no clapping uh, in, in between uh, the message. If you want to clap, I'll actually, when they come on, I will ask all of us to clap for the children. And right in the end, uh, we'll do likewise as well. But in the middle, please, no clapping. So... I think that's all that I have to say for now. I'll just check whether the children are, are ready. Yes, I, I mentioned right at the start of the service, in case you came a little bit late, uh, those who have smartphones or mobile phones or not so smartphones, please turn them to silent mode. Huh? And if you really must receive a call, please go to the foyer to receive the call. Without much ado, I introduce the Hallelujah Kids Choir, The Legacy of Love.
know how crazy is he about Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> Hi kids! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! How's my Hallelujah Kids Choir today? Enjoying the Christmas season? Mm -hmm. I love Christmas, did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> so, Susie, what's on the agenda for today? Well, Josiah Kapo, today we are going to upload some of our kids' choir photos for our Clan Wesley website. That's nice. I'm trying to organize some caroling for later this week. I hope I can count you kids in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. You know, my sister always used to organize a caroling before she got sick. I know she wants us to continue all these wonderful traditions. She's one of the few people that actually love Christmas more than I do. I know the best way to honor her memory is to continue to do the work she loves. So, can I count you all in? Okay. Okay. Great! I need to run back to the church office and check on some things. You kids get started on those photos and I'll double check your work when I get back. Okay, Bye. Jesse Coco. I'll get started on those photos. Hey, isn't it almost time for the Kids for Christ Malaysia internet broadcast? Yeah, I'll open it up right now. Good afternoon kids! I trust your Christmas season has been filled with joy and merriment so far. I'm Jim. And I'm Krista. We want to welcome you back to Kids for Christ Malaysia and hope your weekend was fabulous. Now we mentioned yesterday that we've got a big announcement to make. We want to um, stir the Christmas pot so to speak. Get you thinking on this one. Well Christmas is a time of receiving but it's also a great time of giving. Well. Think for a moment about what each of you is thankful for this Christmas. And now, think of the great God who makes all that possible. Kind of mind-blowing, isn't it? Yes, it is, Krista. And to think that for Christmas, He gave you the most amazing Christmas present ever, His Son. So the Kiss for Christ Malaysia producers here were thinking, what's a way we could encourage you kids to really be kids for Christ? And the answer was simple.
so kids, what's it gonna be? Are you ready to give back to the Lord who gave it all? And the big announcement is... This year we are sponsoring a Leave a Mark contest. Yes, you heard right, a Leave a Mark contest. So here are the rules. You have one week to come up with a variety of ways to show Christ's love in service to others. This is how the Leave a Mark contest works. It's all about passing on Christ's love to others. Now think for a minute about all those people in your life that have shown you God's love. They have given you gifts of time or things that are special to you. And now it's your chance to pay it forward. So send us your ideas and document your service. The team that does the best job wins the grand prize, a brand new iPad. So kids, get out there and get creative. Show God's love in as many ways as you can think of. It's your turn to leave your own mark this Christmas. All the best and God bless. Wow, that's a fun! Hey kids, how are the photos going? Going great, Josiah Coco. What a text! Sure, uh, let me just switch on my iPad and take a look. Oh no! Uh oh, what happened to your iPad now, Josiah Coco? It looks like my operating system just rose up. Well, it doesn't surprise me. I was going to replace this iPad anyway. But what bad timing! Right at Christmas. Uh, let me go see if I can borrow Uncle Johnny Lim's iPad. I'll be right back. So, are you thinking what I'm thinking? That they're out of french fries? No, about your side of all. He has french fries? No, silly, he needs an iPad. Still not following. He needs a new iPad to eat french fries? <laughs> oh wait, to order french fries online! <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Joey. Josiah Coco needs a new iPad. And the kid for Christ contest can win a spot! Exactly! That would be a great Christmas present. This is a difficult time for Josiah Coco. <sighs> his first Christmas without his sister. And he loves Christmas so much. So, what are we waiting for? Let's give him an iPad. It will be easy. We've got to be super creative. We better get started. Don't worry, my mom says I'm the queen of initiative. <laughs> initiative? What's that? The country where they invented French fries? <laughs> <laughs> no, silly. It means seeing what has to be done and doing it. Oh, I'm all for that. Yeah, let's make it happen. Something easy this time. 
Wait a minute. This is about showing Christ's love. He didn't take the easy way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I guarantee whatever you can think of. He is some bigger thing. Hey, I like that. I got some bigger things. It has a ring to do with it.
the donation box for the minor ministry class in just a day. Now who is in charge here? Why don't you help us out? Okay, but it will cost you some Kit Kat. Let's make a couple of pals. Clothes. Toys. What else?
suffer and it was the yummiest. Wow, it was crazy how excited those kids at the home were to have us visit. Yeah, we should visit them more often. Susie, you ready to document this one? Yeah. You're right. Now, this is our third entry. We made brownies for the kids at St. Barnabas' home. And boy, were they happy to see us. I mean, we will just bring them brownies, but you would have thought that we were giving them a flat screen TV. So, I guess we just leave a mark. Entry was a gift of, well, uh, something little meant something big. Uh huh.
For those of you who studied in Penang, I went to Wellesley Primary School. And it was an all-boys school. And uh, I had this uh, teacher in the school who was very good in singing and dancing. And uh, she always looked forward towards the end of year concert and Christ giving day. Now what happened is that she took popular musicals. And I remember one such was the South Pacific. And she used to get her team of boys and half of them had to act as women and the other half as men. She usually had her auditions uh, a few months before the concert and I remember purposely uh, failing the audition because I didn't want to be dressed up as a woman if I was successful. Somehow she had a, a, a glee on her face uh, when she put lipstick on the boys. Uh, these are all like 9, 10 year old boys and made them sing so sweetly. And there was 100% entertainment value. Now, thankfully today, uh, most of our schools are co-ed. And uh, thankfully for our children here, they are also boys and girls, so they don't have to play uh, parts of the other gender. Jane has been training this uh, kids' choir, Hallelujah Kids' Choir, for the last three years. And she has kind of drilled into their heads and their hearts that this is not entertainment. Yes, we try to do our very best for Jesus in terms of our singing and our acting. <clears throat> but God has a purpose for every one of these children here. And very much like uh, Jonah in the Old Testament, Peter in the New Testament, God wants the message to come in our hearts first. Although we are a channel of God's love to the congregation of the people, but the message must touch me first. And when the message touches me, then only will the people know, especially the family members to know of this legacy of love. A few months ago when Jane was going to her Christian Resource Center in the USA via the internet, uh, she came across this musical, The Legacy of Love. She knew that our church theme for this year is based on love and the words are up here. And she asked me, what do I think about this? And I said, fantastic. I said, leaving a legacy of love. Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa. Nelson Mandela died recently, Mother Teresa, many years ago. Unequivocally, they are known for people with an outstanding record of love, or leaving a legacy of love. Adolf Hitler, he is known for notorious reasons for leaving a legacy of hatred. In the story of the Good Samaritan that was read to us prior to the musical, we find that an expert in the law came up to Jesus and asked him, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus looked at him and he said, you know the law, what does the law say? What, does, what do the uh, first five books in the Bible, what, do, what does that teach you? And he quoted correctly, he said, love the Lord, your God, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, very good. Do it and you will live. Now, the Bible also tells us that this man wanted to justify himself. Now, if the man stopped there, we would have never have heard the story of the Good Samaritan. But he went on to say, who is my neighbor? And Jesus gave him one of the most outstanding stories in scripture. And he said about this Samaritan man. And dear friends, please note that the Samaritan, to the eyes of Jewish people, they were the scum of society. 
And, and Jesus used two other people, a priest and a Levite, and they were highly elevated in the eyes of the Jewish society. And so the contrast was very great here. He told the story of a man who was left half dead after being robbed. And there came a priest, there came a Levite, but they refused to help this man until the Samaritan came by. And it was love in action. It was grace because the Samaritan man did not owe this man who was half dead anything. And he took him, he nursed him, took him to the inn, and even after he left the inn, he gave instruction of looking after this man. Romans chapter 13 verse 8 says, Let no debt remain outstanding except the debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. And all this is in line with the story of the Good Samaritan. Let no debt remain outstanding except the outstanding debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. We live in this 21st century where advancements in science and technology have just grown in exponential sense. But issues of wealth disparity has not been solved. Decades ago, leaders of nations recognized that the rich are very rich and the poor are very poor. Right till today, the rich have become richer and the poor have become poorer. Right till today, hatred and selfishness has increased and love in action is still found wanting in our society. About a month ago, the children were challenged to go and visit a poor family. And so they went to one corner in Klang and they visited this refugee family. And the wife is actually bedridden. And last Sunday in church, there were some slides and sharing about this. I went along on that occasion and I saw these children who are here with me and some were very emotionally and spiritually moved by that experience. You know why? Every one of them, I dare say, lives in a better standard of condition than that family. And they were challenged to actually make some cookies which they did recently and sold in church and get the money to help this family. And they were challenged that if you want to sing about God's love, you have to do something, not merely sing about God's love. We have heard this poem, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And coming back to my primary school days, you know, this teacher, she really did a fantastic job with the children during the concert day. And they came, and the little boys looked like girls who were supposed to be girls, and the boys were boys. They were all dressed up, they sang, they acted so beautifully. But you know what? That is a performance. Today we are teaching our children that we need to follow what Christ has told us to share with one another and especially this message of love. It's easy to be an armchair critic. It's difficult to be involved in works of charity and love and leave a legacy of love. Those involved in church leadership know often, often at times those who serve the Lord are the ones being criticized by those who are armchair critics. It says that 20% of the people in church are actively involved in God's service. 80% are inactive. Dear friends, the challenge for us today is are we going to leave the legacy of love? You know the song, the main song, the legacy of love, the words are so that I want to read them to you one more time. There are people in our lives for just a season. They watch us grow and love us as we are. And when they step away, you see a brilliant tapestry, an imprint on our lives that shows their heart. It's a legacy of love and it's amazing. And ever changing as the sand along the shore, 
And if you hold those memories inside your heart, you take a hold of the gift, the legacy of love. There's a father who loves children without question, and he knows each hair on every child's head. And when he steps away, he sees a brilliant tapestry, a world in need of love's redeeming gift. It's a legacy of love and it's amazing and never changing as a sand along the shore. And if you hold these promises inside your heart, you take hold of the gift, a legacy of love. At this time, I invite the people in charge to bring the Christ candle forward. <coughs> Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Dear friends, Jesus wants us to leave a legacy of love. And so today, I just invite those who have the candles to come forward at this time. <coughs> the challenge is for all of us, including those uh, upstairs in the balcony. You can walk down through the side staircase here. Do you want to leave a legacy of love for other people? Remember, even in a church, researchers have said that 80% of people take an inactive role and 20% are actively involved. Do we want to shatter these statistics? We want to say that 50% are actively involved in God's service. Firstly, for parents and grandparents, do you want to put a legacy of love in your children and grandchildren? There are some parents, some grandparents, let me talk to grandparents first. You know, in your younger days, maybe God was not very important in your life. And maybe you pursued after goals in life that, where God was not really involved. And now that you're retired, semi-retired, you think about life and realize that God is important in your life. And now your children have grown, they have become adults, but they have children and so these are your grandchildren. And now you think in your heart, yes, I want to leave a legacy of love in the life of my grandchildren. I have mucked it up in the life of my own children, but God does not that take that against me what God is interested in, what I do now and in the future. And my grandchildren are here now with me and also in the days ahead. And so grandparents and parents, if you want to leave that legacy of love, I would want to call you in a moment's time to come forward. When you come forward, you will take a candle that is being provided and it will be lit and you'll just stand here for a while and I'll close in prayer before I hand the time for one final song for the children. The second category that I want to speak is for adults. It doesn't matter whether you're single or married, as long as you want to leave an imprint in the life of the younger generation here, the children that are on the stage, the children that are seated in the congregation, and you want to leave that legacy of love for them, I want you to also come forward, take a candle, and make a dedication to the Lord today. <clears throat> Remember, those who are single, you have such a vital part to play in church, as uncles and aunties towards your nephews and nieces, and other children as well. And thirdly, anyone who wants to make an impact, 
in your school, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, in the church here. You know, some of our church members are van drivers. They go out to fetch children from poorer families and they come. They spend two, three, four hours every weekend just picking up these children and dropping them back. You know what? You think you're doing very little for the Lord, but in the eyes of the children, you are fantastic because you care enough to go and fetch them and bring them here. And that's just one area. There are many other areas as well. And so even at this time, we I'll light the Christ candle, I'll come down to do that, and then I'll call people to come forward, leaders of the church, if we want to leave a legacy of love, this is our time for responding. Dear friends, please come forward even as I've invited you to come forward. I'll also ask the people who are having the candles to come up here so that you can receive maybe one lady this side and one lady this side so that we can cover both sides. Dear friends, do you want to leave that legacy of love? Please come forward at this time. Come forward. Dear friends, the lives of other people are precious in God's eyes. Do you want to do something for God in their lives? Please come forward. Just take a candle, have it lit from the Christ candle or from others. And we are going to have a prayer for you today. My wife says there are 200 candles. Don't worry, there are plenty of candles here. Just come forward. Just stand wherever there's vacant uh, floor space up front here. There are people in your lives for just a season. They watch us grow and love us as we are. And when they step away, you see the prayer. Those upstairs, please use the staircase. There's a side sex staircase that comes directly down. Dear friends, do you want to leave a legacy of love for your children's generation, for the children in our church, for the children in the community? They need the love of God desperately in their lives. And we can do something, even something small will be an imprint in their life for God's love towards them. Please come down with this time. Husbands and wives, uh, I apologize. Uh, can you share one candle? You just put your arm around your husband or wife and hold one candle. Please come forward. If your husband and wife use one candle, thank you.
still some more space up front here. Please come forward. Let's come before the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, we come before you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You told us to shine our light. You told us that a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither we light a lamp and hide it under a bowl, but you want us to shine that light by the good deeds that you give us to do to others, Lord. Lord, no, it's not hard, Lord, when you are with us and you give us your strength, Lord, and the children desperately need your love, more so in the society, Lord Jesus. Lord, how much hatred, how much brokenness there is among families in the society. Lord, use this as your instruments, your channel of love to bless their lives even today. And so for all my dear friends up here with the candles, even sharing candles, Lord, I pray that you bless them, empower them at this time. And may they know your power in the days ahead, in the year ahead, 2014. To be your agents, your vehicles of love. To bless others in the workplace, in the schools, in the neighborhoods. That they may know Jesus Christ and his love. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Amen. Thank you, dear friends, for responding. Uh, you may stand here until the, the children are finished singing. Then you may go back to your seats. But when you go back to your seats, please extinguish your candles. You may go back to your seats. Uh, you can extinguish your candles uh, before you are seated. We are almost going to end our service for today. to come up. Uh, we're going to sing our closing song for today. Sorry, uh, before the closing song, there's one more song by the children. Okay, so please be seated first. Musicians, you can be ready, that's fine. We'll pass it to the children. Let's just give them one more round of encouragement.
morning. I know there are many uh, friends and visitors in our midst today. And um, for some of us, uh, we, we may be touched by what we have seen and heard. We may not know Jesus personally and intimately. And perhaps today is a day that you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So at this time, let's just close our eyes. Let's uh, bow down. I'll just take a moment to do this. If there's anyone here in this sanctuary, both upstairs or downstairs, and you want to know more of Jesus, perhaps you have come to the moment where you actually want to say, Yes, Lord, I want to believe in you, and I want to receive you as Lord and Savior. And if that's you today, please raise your hand at this time. And I just want to see if there's anyone here who wants to believe in Jesus or know more about Jesus. Could you just raise your hand? I just want to have a short prayer and then we'll go into the closing song. Anybody here who wants to know more about Jesus as Lord and Savior or you want to believe in Him? Let's pray at this time. Lord, we know that for some, Lord, there's still that seeking and searching after you. And so, Lord, even today, come and reveal yourself in ever more clear and certain ways. Indeed, you came into this world. We sing joy to the world because you are Savior and Lord. So, Lord, just pray for your wonderful work among your people here, among friends, visitors, guests. And Lord, we ask that one day that there will be that response towards you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Dear friends, immediately after the service, which will be in a, in a moment's time, I'll be standing here together with some of my leaders. And if you want to come and ask more about Jesus, please come forward at this time, at the end of the service. Without much ado, let's all arise. We'll sing our closing song, uh, Joy to the World. I've not told the musicians, but can we go to uh, We Wish You a Merry Christmas after that? Yeah, thank you.
go from this place, Lord, we ask for your peace and blessings to go before us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. We'll go straight into, we wish you a Merry Christmas. As you sing, you can go out. Uh, Nasi Lama is that direction. Uh, you can stay in the foyer. Okay, over to the worship team.